So as of about a week ago, I started this new tradition that I have, which is if I can't think of what to say or what to do on a video, I just hit record and start going because, you know, that's smart. So um, this is the first video to my new series called something like uh, Ken LaSalle Answers the Really Important Questions. We'll, we'll see the title screen, I'm sure. Anyway, I wanted to explain just a little bit of why I'm taking this direction and uh, going this way with this channel. You probably, well, you probably didn't see that I just uh, recently launched another uh, show called Cultural Irrelevancy. I'm really good at coming up with stuff right off the, right off the cuff, aren't I? Cultural Irrelevancy is just uh, my goofy take on whatever topic seems entertaining to me at the time. And, and the reason I did that is because I, I wanted, I thought I would uh, like the, all the folks watching on YouTube, there are so many of you, and I, and I thank you all. I wanted to, uh, to let you see uh, maybe the goofier, more fun side of me. So when I'm plugging my books, you can kind of get a sense of where that's coming from. And, and the idea has always been, if you like my stuff here, maybe you'll like my books, because the underlying current is always, hey, buy a book. But maybe not quite that desperately, one would hope. So the idea behind uh, this new show is, if I'm doing one show that's a goofy take on things, I want to do one show that's more serious, kind of like the, along the lines of Just to Clarify. But I don't want to just give my opinion. I would also like to actually address important questions with real answers. Um, now, I know this is a stupid idea. I know this is a grade A class act moronic move. Because how do you get trolls on YouTube? This is how you get trolls on YouTube. But um, I thought it might be fun. So, without further ado, here is the first episode of Ken LaSalle Answers All the Really, 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 Really Important Questions. We'll just slather it on the screen here. Just boop, throw it on up. There you go. That's the name. What is truth? Truth is an agreed upon conclusion to a series of data, either individually or collectively. Now, that covers a bit, so let's take it step by step. Truth is reached when we look at a series of data, just a, a bunch of data that we run into in our lives, and being the helpful people that we are, we try to extract some meaning from that data. And the meaning we find, we conclude to be the truth. We agree to a conclusion that this means this, and the this that it means is the truth, either within ourselves or between ourselves and others. Sometimes we'll adopt truths others have discovered, but we wouldn't adopt them if we didn't somehow agree with them. Get me? Now, some of you may be asking yourself, hold on, if truth is an agreed-upon conclusion, wouldn't that suggest that there's no such thing as objective truth? And you're right. There is no such thing as objective truth. I suppose I'm going to have to explain that, aren't I? Okay, how do you get rid of objective truth? Simple. You prove that everything is subjective. How do you prove that everything is subjective? Simple. This is our universe. Here. It's a nice little universe. Passable Mexican restaurants on the whole. But now, there's this theory that ours is not the only universe. We are simply a part of a larger multiverse. A multiverse, also known as multiple universes, 
would not require each universe to be a carbon copy of each other and after all, a copy isn't the same as another. Which means that were there to be multiple universes, there would also be multiple data sets, which would seem to suggest multiple truths, thus eliminating the possibility for one objective truth. Voila! But okay, what if there aren't multiple universes? What if ours is the one, the only one? Well, to start, that would mean that good tasting negative calorie ice cream won't ever be a thing. And that's a shame. It also means that we have to discuss perspective. Each person has their own perspective. So even if there were an absolute truth, it would immediately become subjective from your perspective. Here's how you know. God is generally considered the most perfect thing in or out or around the universe. The absolute, if you will. If there was a single absolute truth, it would be God. Okay then, define God. Now, if I were to see the results of the five or six of you who watch this video, I'd probably see a few answers along the line of God is love, with some other pretty weird answers as well. Since we interpret data, we interpret truth through our perspective, and we do not yet have sentient robots who can function independent of perspective, all truth, therefore, becomes subjective. Some might say that absolute truth functions outside of our perspective and understanding, but I would say that makes it a moot point. Since there is no voice of absolute truth, each person has just as much value as the next or we're gonna have real problems, we must be convinced of the truth. This is how silly superstitions win us over, by sounding convincing. The beauty of science is that its truths can be duplicated by anyone. They don't need to sound convincing. But that doesn't mean you don't need to be convinced because you still have your own perspective, which is different from everyone else's. And if you think about it, that also puts science in a superior position to superstition because it is perspective agnostic while superstition must rely on our basest stupidity and any flaw in our perspective to possibly pass itself off as a kind of truth. And yes, there are other pursuits just as noble as science that can't rely on the scientific method. Philosophy, for instance. While philosophy employs rigid skepticism, that's still not the scientific method. You know the scientific method, right? Oh, come on. Please say you do. Come on. Okay, tell you what. Stop this video and go watch one about the scientific method. I'll wait. Oh, oh you, you back? D did you get it? Good. But note that the difference between swindlers who will lie to you with superstition and a philosopher is just what I mentioned. Rigid skepticism. This makes defeating the swindlers of superstition quite easy by employing the weapon of rigid skepticism. Question everything. And if it isn't precisely clear, question it again. And don't stop until you're satisfied. And don't be too easily satisfied. This definition of truth, that truth is an agreed-upon conclusion to a series of data either individually or collectively, arms us against liars who will suggest that subjective truth is worth less, somehow, than objective truth. The objective truth that only they have, somehow. Worth less than something that doesn't exist? Hardly. For thousands of years, human societies have functioned on the foundation 
of subjective truth, that we must all work with each other and convince one another and compromise now and again. When absolute truth is mandated, societies crumble and fall. The rigid demand for absolutes summoned out of our own fears and uncertainties makes agreement and compromise utterly impossible, leaving us with institutions that can no longer function for fear of somehow contradicting the absolute truths or lies that have conned them. This is why understanding the nature of truth is so important. It empowers you to understand your world and your life and exposes liars, swindlers, and other religious leaders for exactly what they are. Okay, and just one more thing. If you'd like a glimpse at how our society stands on the issue of truth, you need look no further than your local search engine. When I searched the term, what is truth, on Google and Bing, I found one definition, good to start with, a link to an open forum where knowledge is democratized, and a Wikipedia link. Aside from that, every remaining link directed me to a site with a clear point of view. And as we now know, perspective creates subjective truth. Worse still was how more than half of the search results directed me towards religious outlets, each claiming their own dominion over truth. So, I must tell you that the absolutists are winning, which tells you something about our society. But I like to remain hopeful. Understanding the way something like truth affects us, both as a society and alone, might give you some idea about why I think answering important questions like these is important. Because truth matters. Consider this. The larger a truth is, by which I refer to its dissemination in society, the stronger it is, the more people who believe a thing, the more that thing is likely to be believed, gives it credence. You share an intimate truth with someone, and it may be small, but it's powerful, and you can feel that. And there have been times in the history of our species when certain truths have been unalienable. It doesn't really feel like there's a whole lot of that around anymore. Things we thought we set in stone are no longer so set. We've forgotten that the truths we share are a bond we share with each other. And when you go for Trump, or when you say something hateful, or when you show little regard for your responsibility to the world, then we've got a disagreement, and our bond is broken. And I have to tell you that I do not know how to mend that break. We know it has to come from both sides, but how does it start? I think it has to start with truth, with exercising our abilities to be convincing and to compromise, and to help others understand certain truths, such as that our oceans should contain more fish than plastic, preferably. Or that we shouldn't separate children from their parents, ideally. Little things like that. We are going to decide our own truth, which will become our tale. It will become our history. And when we look back on the truths we settled for, what are we going to see? I don't know, man. I gotta go write a book. And there you go. That was the first episode of Ken LaSalle Answers the Really, 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 etc., etc., etc. Important questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions of your own that you think might uh, work in this format, 
Please leave them in the comments below. I'd like to hear your take on truth and what it's like to live in a post-truth world. Until next time. And there you have it. You've just survived another Ken LaSalle video. For more information about new releases, projects in the works, or even stuff from the archives, head on down to KenLaSalle.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and all around social media. Just as long as it's called Facebook or Twitter. Thanks for your support, as always. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, and I'll be back soon with more nonsense.